And the problem is we don't know how many people died in Ontario, but we do have a guest who can give us a bit of insight. Dr. Rewat Dianandan is an epidemiologist, associate professor at the University of Ottawa, and we welcome you to the program, sir. Thank you very much. All right, so tell me a little bit about this. How do we get into a situation where we don't know how many people have expired? <laughs> it's a really good question. And uh, the Ontario Public Health Data Collection System is considered by many epidemiologists to be a little antiquated to begin with. It's a slow process. I, I mean, it was built in 1700. <laughs> Possibly. Okay. Like, uh, death certificates when signed by a doctor are, are sent to a central repository, I, I think in Thunder Bay somewhere, and then pros- by, processed by some... Uh, administrator somewhere, and, and that somehow percolates its way to a database. Um, we don't do it as efficiently as other provinces or other countries, for that matter. And I don't really know why. Um, the barrier is not a, a medical one. It's an administrative one. Well, it seems to me in these very simplistic days, I mean, I'm sitting in front of right now three computers and they're all mine, and they all do different things, and there's nothing special about any of them. Anybody who has a computer can buy any one of them. Um, you can buy programs off the shelf that are database programs that you can configure very quickly, and you can decentralize on a wide area network or using the Internet, and you can enter a piece of information. Well, it strikes me that a piece of information would be that um, John Smith died at such and such a hospital of such and such a disease. He was this age. This was his birthday. This was his date and time of death, which is more or less what you need to know. Um, we don't do that. We don't. I mean, we do collect that information, and eventually it does make it into that kind of database. It's just the lag time is problematic. And part of the problem has to do with just the flow of data, not just death data, but public health data in general. Previous to the SARS epidemic uh, 17 years ago, we had this really old system of, of uh, outbreak information collected at the public health unit that's then shared to the, the ministry office, which is then shared to the federal office. But in times of emergency, that gets really broken down. And sometimes it's someone email in an Excel file with minimal data that has errors in it. So it's a really broken broken telephone process almost where the message gets diluted until it gets to a central processing center. Pa- after SARS, a lot of that was fixed. We created uh, PHAC, but a lot of it wasn't fixed. And in Ontario, that data flow process, I think, still has, some, has a lot of uh, work to be done to make it better. It shouldn't be this difficult. I mean, we've been calling for improvements in what we call surveillance, which is a scary word for a lot of people. But surveillance just means the ability to detect diseases in real time and to understand who's getting them, who's dying of them in real time. We well, just invented them. the system. Just there. I, I, I'm being facetious, of course, yeah. but it really isn't much more than a database that's decentralized and a, a private site that uses the Internet. And somebody could uh, could certainly put this together. I'm, I'm looking at material that says that uh, British Columbia does this like that. Yes, absolutely. There's no reason for us not to have it. It's administrative folly. And it's a lack of, uh, I don't want to point fingers, but there's a lack of political will and a lack of ability to throw resources at the problem to make it go away. It's it's entirely an administrative problem, not a, a scientific one. Okay, so I guess there's no uh, urging or plan to be put forward by you. You're just speaking up as an epidemiologist yourself and wanting accurate stats because they are, are they figure in as part of your work and you don't have them. And so um, the call, I suppose, is for the ministry, which is government and consumer services, to take another look at this and uh, put some speed on. That's right. And in absence of this information, we, we can't have the appropriate data to make good forecasting decisions, and we can't have uh, the appropriate data to respond to public inquiries about what is a true cost of COVID-19, for example. We have a good sense of the number of COVID-19 deaths, um, but we don't have a good sense of what the total deaths are in the province to relate that to. In fact, we're probably undercounting the COVID-19 deaths because we don't know the people who died at home, and this would give us a chance to estimate that number as well. So part of my frustration is um, I'm feeling so many questions from the public about uh, conspiracy uh, theories, but how we're intentionally conflating and uh, upping the estimates of the deaths, when in fact we're underestimating the deaths. This information would go a long way to addressing those conspiracy theories and to make people calmer and understand the true extent of the problem. So it's a big problem. 
Well, uh, you know, now more than ever. And and so uh, I hope that you get what you want. And uh, I hope that uh, our conversation this morning has helped make it a little bit more public and a little bit more urgent. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. That was Dr. Raywat Dianandan, epidemiologist, associate professor at the University of Ottawa.